Hey there, one good Tuesday evening to you. It is Weather for Weather Geeks time. One more clunker to get through on Wednesday before things start to turn around weather-wise. We've got some interesting things to talk about this evening, including a, uh, an important date in weather history in our area, with it being a round number especially. This year is the anniversary of the landfall of Hurricane Hazel back in 1954 on October the 15th. And this is one of the more noteworthy tropical systems to impact far eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. This brought 4.31 inches worth of rain locally. It brought 100 mile per hour winds to parts of New York City. This rocketed northward after making landfall at such a rapid rate um, that it didn't weaken a whole lot before it impacted a lot of fairly inland locations. So on this date 70 years ago, a big amount of rain uh, from Hurricane Hazel, thanks to everyone who submitted pictures of the comet last evening. I didn't talk about this much um, before last evening because I kind of thought we'd have too many clouds to deal with. Uh, but we had some holes in the clouds last evening, including this one, sent to us by Derek Steyer's wife up there in Trumbull County looking across Mosquito Lake at the uh, comet. This comet is actually visible all week long. Um, it will get a little higher in the sky and a little dimmer as the week progresses. And this evening... A few holes in the clouds may allow you to, to see this. I think we'll have a perfectly clear sky later this week, Thursday evening and Friday evening, to check out this comet. Now, it, it, your best bet is to look not just west, but a specific time, mostly 45 minutes or so after sunset, and so starting at around 7.15, and it will be visible up through about 8.30, 8.45 ish, maybe 9 o'clock over the next couple of nights if the clouds cooperate over your location. Later this week, it won't. Uh, uh, set, if you will. Um, the comet will be visible a little bit longer in, into the evening. So I think uh, it'll, it's something like 9.15 or 9.30. Uh, you can see it as late as those times when our sky is clear later this week. All right, so today was uh, not exactly a great day weather-wise. And while we didn't have any true big fat snowflakes, we did have some soft hail and some grapple and maybe even a few snow grains mixed in. Basically, grapple is something we talk about a lot in the cold weather season, uh, especially in our part of the country. This is something we're prone to seeing. And basically, grapple happens when up in the cloud layer, snow fall starts falling. It's cold enough for snow up there, but then falls through a layer of water droplets that are what we call super cooled. And a super cooled water droplet is basically water that stays liquid, even though the temperature is below 32. That can happen at certain pressure levels. If the air pressure is low enough, uh, you can have liquid um, maintaining itself as a liquid instead of a solid, uh, even though it's uh, below 32. Anyway, those uh, tiny super cool droplets freeze or rime onto the snowflakes. And once you get the result, the resulting effect are basically kind of, they have the consistency and even the look of dipping dots. Very small and crunchy, not quite hail. Hail tends to be a little more solid and not quite as crunchy and certainly not a true snowflake but something kind of in between, and it's something we call grapple, and it's something we see fairly often from October through April in our part of the world. And you could see a couple of those uh, instances of grapple and maybe a, a snow grain or two um, with our showers this evening and into the overnight. This was the radar a little after 7 p.m., and I'm expecting kind of an uptick in shower activity as we head through the overnight. Now, the clouds are making it so we won't get that cold once again tonight. It'll be kind of like last night. Most of us will drop into the upper 30s, but where the clouds are not overhead, it'll be a cold night tonight. In fact, freeze warnings are up for all of western and southern Ohio and parts of Pennsylvania as well, and outside of that, frost advisories have been issued. I suspect our area will be under at least a frost advisory, maybe even a freeze warning later this week, Thursday night, into Friday morning. But in the meantime, we have this northerly flow over the Great Lakes. If this were winter time, we would be talking about streamers of lake effect snow bringing some localized accumulations, but it's October, so it's mostly rain showers. And again, a little bit of an uptick overnight when most of us are sleeping. And the best chance for showers tomorrow, probably with some of these bands that will push through during the morning. And actually, there's going to be a little bit of a Lake Huron connection. Um, sometimes with lake effect and lake enhancement, whether it be rain or snow, not only do we pick up moisture off of Lake Erie, but we can see moisture being picked up off of Lake Huron, more moisture being picked up as the northerly winds continue over Lake Erie and it gets deposited as precipitation in northern Ohio. So hourly rain chances, uh, you can check these out anytime on the Storm Tracker 21 app. We update these frequently throughout the day as new model information becomes available. Our, uh, Best estimate at this point as far as Wednesday's rain chances is they're probably highest in the morning. But much like today, even in the afternoon, there could be a shower or two still 
roaming around. And, you know, when we're in this kind of a lake effect setup and a cyclonic flow around the Great Lakes, we never want to be in a real big hurry to shut down the lake effect machine and clear out the clouds. It, they always stick around the clouds, and even the precipitation sticks around a little bit longer than we kind of are bargaining for sometimes. And so, you know, I don't want to be too optimistic about, you know, how fast the clouds will clear out. I think it may take until Thursday morning, maybe even midday Thursday, before the clouds completely clear. But once they do, once high pressure builds in, boy, are we in for a treat late this week and into the weekend. Some great weather is heading our way. As high pressure basically just drops an anchor right overhead. We're going to have sunny weather from Thursday afternoon right through the first half of next week. All right, we're less than a month away from my annual winter forecast. The date of the annual winter forecast this year will be Monday, November the 11th. We're going to wait until after Election Day and after hopefully the election kind of settles down a little bit. Hopefully we have results within a few days at least of the election, the 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 week before this, but Monday, November 11th is what we're uh, targeting. And if you've been following me for a while, you know how we kind of do this. We do a short version on TV, restricted by time, of course, during a newscast. That's the real to the point version. The longer weather geek version, kind of in the vein of my daily weather for weather geek videos, um, that'll go online after our six o'clock newscast Monday evening, November the 11th. We have a La Nina winter this year. Uh, last year we had El Nino in the Pacific. This year it's La Nina. It's the fourth La Nina winter out of the last five. La Nina has been fairly persistent in recent years. So we'll break down what that means for us. Many other factors go into a seasonal forecast. You know, we tend to, or the media especially, kind of has a tendency to just focus on El Nino and La Nina, but there's a lot more that goes into these things. And we'll be kind of talking about uh, different aspects of the winter forecast coming up over the next few weeks in anticipation of the uh, reveal of that winter outlook on Monday, November the 11th. In the meantime, thanks for watching on this Tuesday evening. Have a great rest of your night, and I'll see you back here on Wednesday.